Hello everyone, and welcome to part 3 of CSS Level 1. A major part of what we've seen so far has revolved around the idea of CSS selectors, where selectors in general are used to target HTML elements that we want to style. So far, we've only approached the idea of selecting HTML elements by their tags, so grab all paragraph tags or grab all list tags. But what if we only want to select subsets or select a single element? That is where we can use selectors to clarify exactly what elements we want in the HTML. We can use IDs to target single elements, and we can use classes to target groups of elements, and then we can also use a wide variety of combinations of selector tags to target certain combinations of elements, things such as descendants or adjacent siblings, and we're going to talk a lot more about that. So let's jump right in to show how this all works. All right, so here I have an HTML called part3.html, and it's linked to part3 underscore master.css. And in the body of this HTML, I'm going to add some content. I'll add a heading three that says, I'm a h3 heading, and then I'm going to add some divs. And now when it says class, remember it auto-completes class, I'm going to actually add some classes to this. So we'll call this first div class. And we'll put a paragraph in here that says, I'm inside the first div class. That way we can see what's going on when we actually begin to style these. Then I will add another division container and we'll call this second div. And in a paragraph, we'll write, I'm inside the second div class. And then we'll add a little bit more. I'm going to add a paragraph and with this paragraph, we're going to add an ID to it. So we'll add an ID, and we're going to set it equal to singled out. And in this paragraph, we'll say IDs must be unique. Then we're going to make another heading three that says, here's a list. And you can also just copy and paste this from the part3.html if you don't want to type it all out yourself. And we'll have an unordered list. Li will say something like confirm. You can write whatever really text you want in here. And then Li will say something like feedback, question mark. And inside of these list elements, we're also going to add inputs. So this first input is going to just be a checkbox input and the second input is going to be a text. So a checkbox, really similar to a radio button that we've seen earlier, except in our case, it's actually just a checkbox that you've probably seen before online. And then another list, we're going to drop an anchor tag here, and we'll give an href to a website. This website will be my website, pyreandata.com, and we'll say pyreandata, I know this is a lot of content, so feel free to pause or just copy and paste from the notes. And then we'll put another anchor tag here that has an href of some other website. Let's just say npr.org, or you can put any news website you want here, or really any website. And we'll say that's npr. All right, lots of stuff here, so let's break it down real quick. Let's refresh this to make sure everything's linked. Expand it a bit. All right, so right now I have this h3 heading something that's inside the first div class, something that's inside the second div class. Let me make sure I spelled that correctly. Refresh this. And then IDs must be unique. There's our ID. We have here is a list, confirm with a checkbox on it that we can click on and off. Feedback with some text input here. Then two links here, Pyrene Data and NPR. All right. We have all of this, so now let's jump to CSS and actually talk about how we can link to this. So notice here I have classes and then my IDs. So if I come to my CSS and I say something like div and I specify the color of all divs to be red and then I come back here and I refresh this, no matter where the div is, no matter what class it is, as long as it has the tag div, it's going to be the color red. So first div becomes red, second div becomes red. Normally, however, you don't want to affect every single tag that has div. You want to select subsets. In that case, we can use these classes that we assigned. So I can select first div or second div instead of selecting everything that's inside any div. And that's the key to using classes. 
Now what you can't do if a class is just say first div and then color something blue. Otherwise, if I refresh this, notice no change occurs. When you're dealing with a class, you tell CSS that it's a class through a dot. So classes always start with a dot or a period. So now if I save this, refresh over here, I can see that I'm inside the first div class has now become blue. And likewise, I can grab the second div and color that red. Refresh this, and I can see now inside the first div class, inside the second div class, are their own individual colors. So this is a very common tool to use. And this is where we're getting into the idea of selectors. So for classes, they always start with this dot or this period. Okay, now we noticed that we also had an ID. And for IDs, you want an ID to be unique. It just is attached to a single element versus classes can be attached to multiple elements. So for an ID, it's usually just a single element. Classes can be across multiple divisions, multiple containers, multiple paragraphs, etc. Classes use a hashtag. So shift number three, there's a hashtag there. And then we put in the name of the class, which in our case was singled out. And we can see that also the syntax highlighting tells you, oh, you're dealing with a class here. So let me double check that it's singled out. There it is. And let's change this something to color, let's say green. And let's also give it a, something called a text decoration. So text decoration, I'm just going to kind of throw this in. These are things such as overlines, underlines, or like a strike through, a line through. So we'll give that a line through save it, let's refresh. We can see here we see IDs must be unique is now the color green and it also has a line through. So they were kind of just throwing in a little two in one, both how to use IDs and the fact that you can use text decorations as another property. And you can always use the CSS references in the notes for various properties if you're looking for them. Another common thing, actually not common, sorry, is the asterisk. The asterisk is a selector for selecting every element on the page. So if I say color every element, and then let's say black, I save this and refresh. It's going to color everything black, and it's going to override certain things. It won't override IDs, but you can see here that it's overriding these class calls. This asterisk call um, tries to override as much as it can over all the elements. A quick note though, this is actually very uncommon. You usually don't want to just uh, call everything like this. Maybe if you want something like a background, but it's usually pretty uncommon to just call an asterisk there. Although I do want you to be aware that you can use an asterisk to select all the elements in the HTML. However, they'll be overridden if they have a particular ID. All right, finally, I wanna discuss a few different types of selectors. You can check out the links in the actual CSS file if you're interested in more of these. And I have the link open here in a, another tab, but basically here is a CSS selector reference and you can actually call uh, elements on many, many types of selectors. So there's a huge list here of the various types of selectors. And I want to show you a few examples of the more common ones. So, so far we've seen things like class, like dot class, hashtag ID, asterisks to select all the elements, and then certain elements like just calling the element tag. All right, so let's show an example of one of those CSS selectors known as adjacent siblings. And that has to do with elements that are next to each other. Let's imagine that I wanted to select all unordered list items that are next to an H3, a heading three. I would do this, I'd say heading three, and then I use the plus operator. Unordered list, curly braces, and then whatever property I wanted. So let's give them a border. And we can do border, border style, and border thickness all in one line. So instead of saying, like we've done before, border color, and then border width and then border style, I can actually just call border by itself, pass in a thickness, so let's give it four pixels, then give it a style, let's say it's the dotted style, and then give it a, co a color, let's give it purple. And that's kind of a quicker, nicer way to create borders. So we'll save this, refresh our page here, and now I can see that any unordered list that is next to an H3 now has this border. So that's known as adjacent siblings. And you can always reference here on the links in the CSS file for the notes, uh, the various different types of CSS selectors. So in our case, 
this plus basically says select all unordered list elements that are placed immediately after an H3. Okay, there are two more CSS selectors that I want to cover for this lecture, and one of them is known as descendants, and the other one is for attributes. So for descendants, it basically looks like this. If we want to grab all anchor tags that are inside a list, you just put a space between them. So all anchor tags inside of a list, and then we can affect them. So let's give them a color. Let's say something like red, semicolon there, refresh our page. And we can see now that any anchor tag that's inside a list now has the color red. And then the last one I want to show you is how to actually affect attributes. So let's say we want to go further than this and actually grab any anchor tag inside of a list with a particular href, an actual link. Then I can use square brackets for this and say href here equal to www. Let's go with the last one, which was npr.org or whatever website you happen to put in there. We'll give it a color. Let's just give it the color uh, something like blue. And let's give it a border. So let's practice using that border again. Remember, you just give it a thickness, such as five pixels. The style, let's give it the style solid. And then some color, let's give it orange. Save this refresh our page, and we can see now we've selected any anchor tag with this particular href inside of a list and change its color and its border. All right, so that's really all there is for these particular CSS selectors. Throughout the course, the most common ones we're going to be dealing with are really class selectors and ID selectors. While we will show various things such as adjacent siblings or descendants, attributes, etc. These throughout our course are going to be less commonly used just because we won't be really focusing on those type of minute details while we're learning. We will really more focus on classes and IDs. So make sure you really know uh, these two types, dot for right, classes, hashtag for IDs. Okay, and if you ever want to reference the various other types of CSS selectors, just open up the CSS file and it has links to the CSS reference selector pages. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you at the next lecture. Hello everyone, and welcome to part four of CSS level one. We won't actually be doing any coding for this lecture. Instead, we will just be getting a tour of the Google Chrome Browser Inspector, which is a really useful tool for us to actually explore the HTML, CSS, and even later on JavaScript on a website. So go ahead and open up Google Chrome, and let's start exploring. Okay, so here I am at Google Chrome and I have the part3.html file from last time, which is linked to the part3 CSS, open up in my browser, and then in another tab, I have the Google Home website. What I want you to do is with the part3.html file open, you can right click, and previously we've seen how we can just view page source, and that shows us just the HTML that's linked to this document. But what I wanna do now is instead of just viewing the page source, which is just the HTML, I can right click on this and click on inspect. And now let me zoom in a little bit. I can see that here on this panel, I have the HTML code. So that's what we've seen before and stuff gets highlighted as I select it. So as I select H3, I can see that H3 over here is highlighted. And you can also see that there's almost like a bit of a border around it. Some parts blue, some parts orange. We're gonna be discussing that later on. But what I really wanna focus on here is the styles since we're talking about CSS. So we can bring this tab over and here I can actually see the styles that I was assigning to that CSS. So second div is a class where the color is red. And what's really cool about this is you can actually click on some of these things and edit them. So if you begin to zoom out so we can see the whole thing, click on color red and you can actually change this color in real time. So if you want it to be blue, you can see right here on the second div, it's actually changing. So we can make it something extreme and we can just make it any color of the rainbow we want. Great, and other things we can do is select an element to inspect it. So for instance, here on NPR, we can see now that it's an LI, A, and we can see that border and color. So again, we can change the color or we can even change other properties in real time. So if I wanna make this border super thick, you can see that I'm changing it in real time as I type this. Or if I wanna make it dotted instead of solid, I can do that as well. All right. So 
there's two reasons why I want to show you this. Uh, one reason is that if you're working on a website, you can immediately just load it up, start inspecting it, and quickly change things on the fly so you can see how things look and change them immediately without having to constantly refresh your website. You can just play around with the colors here live instead of constantly refreshing. But the more useful tool on this is actually exploring other websites. So for example, you come here to this Google homepage and if you're interested in how something works or what font is going on, maybe you right click, inspect, and you can click on this little tool which is select an element in the page to inspect it. So we click here on the Google search button and now we can see the various styles that have to do with it. So you can see it has a color, we can change that color if we want. So we see here we're changing the font of the actual Google search. Maybe we change it to something green or blue, etc. Something to note here is the only thing I'm changing is what I'm seeing in my browser. If I refresh this page, I'm not actually changing any of the files or any of the CSS files. But again, you can play around with this, maybe make the font huge, so Google search, etc. And as we approach uh, JavaScript and learn how to work with the DOM, which we haven't talked about yet, but we will in the future, we'll see how we can actually use JavaScript to grab some of these elements and then affect them. But right now, I just want you to be aware of the Chrome Browser Inspector as a really great tool for you, not just to explore your own websites, but other people's websites as well. Okay, that's really it for this lecture. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you at the next lecture where we'll hop back into CSS and start coding again.